Okay, people, so I'm back home. So there's here's the recap. The recap is I got a whole bunch of clerks at the courthouse upset with me because I had the two separate sections, right? This is the way it goes. I'll, I'll explain it to you in a nutshell. Oh, Lord. I suppose now I'm wasting film, right? All right. So we got we got the original notice of claim, which is right here. And then okay. we've got the amendment that was, uh, I don't even know where it is. Looks like I lost it already, people. Oh, shit. Hold on a minute. I don't see it. How could I lose? How could I lose my part? Hold on a minute. Oh, lordy. Okay, people, I seriously don't know what is wrong with me, man. My leg, you know, just above the ankle on the side there, for about that much, is like going into a charley horse. Like, serious. My finger went like this, and I couldn't freaking open it. And the thing is, is I haven't been doing any yard work. If I do a lot of yard work with a lot of hammering and stuff like that, I have a problem with this little finger locking up. But for some reason, this hand's been, this one locked up on me, like, just, I don't know, sometime at some point today. I can't remember when exactly. And then just as I went to go turn off the camera, I don't know, I must, I guess I kind of moved the wrong way. And then all of a sudden, my, you know, just above the ankle on that, I don't know what it's called, bone. But it just, like, it feels like a freaking Charlie horse and it's just nodding up in there like this. And I'm like rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. Anyway, I, I'm just kind of like resting my, my, my foot there, trying not to move it. Ho hopefully it will unlock itself. So I don't know what's wrong with me. I Notice it's on the left side, left finger, left foot. What does that mean? I hope it's not a heart attack. Uh, I don't feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Although I, I'm upset, you know, I get upset, right? So anyway, okay, so here's... The 20 pages, well, 19. 19. 19 pages. I suppose, I suppose if I knew how to write, I suppose if I knew how to write uh, relief sought <clears throat> and how to write the um, legal basis in terms of not confusing the court, I suppose. In terms of how other people would normally write it in those circumstances that know what they're doing in case of like an, an example of a lawyer, right? I don't know how to write it as a lawyer would write it. Because I've never been in that situation before where I went to court asking a judge to give me something. And then have to kind of back up that request by providing legal examples as to why I would deserve it, right? So I, I don't know. I don't know how to ask for those things. Like, for example, Fraser Health simply asked for special costs. That was the only thing that they asked for. Well, maybe they asked for something else, but it was the special costs that really stand out in my mind. I don't know what that means in the broader context where, in a, in a, you know, when you think of it as special costs, you know, I'd go into detail. Well, the special costs of this, 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 and this, because I don't know what the realm is of those special costs, whereas um, an agency that works with lawyer, like an, an, a, a, a lawyer of, you know, a lawyers, lawyers, right? They they know what that means in the context of A, B, and C, where I would go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? Because to me, everything is special, whereas to court, it would only apply to some things. So. That's what I'm trying to say is, I didn't edit that part because I wouldn't know what to say. Why say something twice if you've already said it the way you think it should be said? And if it's not acceptable, then somebody has to teach you what's acceptable. They can't penalize you for something that you don't know. 
Same thing with the legal basis. Um, I looked at other, whatever I could find online in terms of a notice of claim or anything similar to a notice of claim. Um, and I just kind of drew on that in terms of, you know, adding in legal cases or in some cases like mandates and that type of thing, right? Rules and regulations. And because I am struggling with my eyesight, I took the time not only for myself, but for the convenience of others who, when this goes to trial, because I'd like to think it will, not that I want to go to trial, but I just, I just think in order for a precedence to be set for, for, you know, years to come, I think it's very important that, um, you know, I just stay the course, right? So when it gets to trial, um, for the convenience of others, in addition to, for myself, you know, to go into page... Forty-two of the legal basis, and it goes into the interpretation, willful and forbidden acts. Again, I don't have to use a magnifying glass or struggle with the Criminal Code of Canada if this subject should come up, which I hope it does. Um, hi, and you know it's in bold bold print where I can easily read it, and because. I wrote it. I know how it applies to other things. So, but again, I'm not a lawyer. So, you know, I don't know how to write that down. Other than I would have just listed a whole bunch of numbers. And that in itself would have been defeating because it would have would not explained anything either, right? So, outside of that, though, what happened was I couldn't file this along with that section, w along with the uh, statement of facts where I drew all the lines and underscored this and, you know, wrote in that. It was either one or the other because if I did them both, it would confuse the court because normally, under normal circumstances, they would take the original st uh, statement of a uh, notice of claim, you know, all three sections, statement of facts, um, legal basis, and uh, relief sought, and that would have been amended and it would have been submitted as a whole under the original notice of claim but because my number for just the statement of facts by itself was 139 pages that's why the judge ordered it down to 20 pages to which I did and I also took the time to um, try and do the best of my ability under the rule book in terms of underscoring and lining out and da -de -de da the original notice of claim and I provided that along with the um, edited amendment but because the rule book says you technically can't do that even though I was told that I can do what I want and then when I said well I want to do this they kept insisting that I couldn't and I said okay well you pick one and then she said well I can't do that you pick one and I said well I'm not going to because you're telling me I can do what I want and then she's saying well if you do it that way the, the court's just gonna get confused and I'm like there's that word confused again <laughs> right so and then it was just kind of like back and forth, back and forth, and then she ran off. And I thought she ran off like two two tellers down to go serve somebody else because that's how bad my eyes are. And I'm standing around 15 minutes later. I'm waiting for security to show up, so I pulled the camera out of my purse and I put it right there because I'll tell you, people, I thought maybe she got mad because when I told her, you give me your name, if you're telling me I can't put them both in, then you give me your name so that when I go in front of the next masters or whoever, right, and they get mad at me because I didn't submit, I didn't submit the ones with all the lines or whatever or whatever, and then they get mad at me, I want to be able to say that so-and-so at the teller wouldn't allow me to submit it. You can't do that. I'm not giving you my name. And I said, well, why not? Right? You're telling me I can't do both. You're being disrespectful. And she ran off. So I'm standing around all paranoid now because I'm thinking she's ignoring me because that's how bad my eyesight is. I thought she was two tellers down serving somebody else with my paper you know, next to her. So I'm standing around waiting for security to haul my ass out of there, right? With my camera ready to be turned on if that should happen because I was going to videotape it. And uh, it turns out it wasn't even the woman two, door, or two tellers down. The one that had taken my paperwork went to management. 
Anyway, I had to go get two extra papers, and by the time I came back and tried to file it again, it was the same thing. You can't do both, and if you do, you're confusing the court, and you got to pick one, and I'm like, yeah, but blah, blah. And then the manager came over, and he's, oh, well, can I interject? You know, I'm already a little familiar with this, and, and you know, here's the deal. And, and then another one came, and, oh, boy, I tell you, we should have had a tea party, right? <laughs> And, and and then the manager came and they ran off and whisper whisper and then the woman came back to me and she said okay we'll do it your way we'll t we'll file them both at the same time but we're putting it down where it's been done by force in other words I forced them to do it and I'm like well this is just great because they're the victims now right because you know I'm trying to appease the lawyer and I'm trying to appease the master Basically, I gave the master what the master wanted, and I tried to do the best of my ability that I could for the lawyer. And I left the relief site and the legal bases for the legal beagles that understand that stuff more and understand the language better than I do, because there's no point in me trying to rewrite it. It's easier just to draw the line in court and move on to the next and let it get settled. That's what I'm hoping for, people. Right, because if I have to get it amended again, if I have to come home and start amending those ones, I wouldn't know what to say. I wouldn't know how to write it. I just wouldn't. And I don't know, I can't, I can't locate um, a sample, a sample notice of claim that's kind of compl compliment. Uh, Andre, please. That's kind of, um, I've been up since 4 o'clock this morning, and it's like going on 6 six o'clock or seven o'clock tonight like serious I started photocopying this stuff <laughs> for the lawyer <laughs> and the courthouse at uh, four o'clock this morning and I left the house at 930 so oh and guess what Andre and I found what did we find today we went to the store at 8 o'clock this morning and we went and go check for some walnut, um, what do you call those things? Oh, for some too. Some walnuts, but what else did we find that we have to dig up? Do you remember? No. The, the white oak? Yeah. Yeah, we found like four or five little baby neglected white oak trees that are kind of like scattered along where the uh, black walnut is. So anyway. So I will put this first, and then I was going to put my day. I did a couple of interviews with some homeless people. Well, really one interview with the homeless people, and a uh, homeless person, I should say. And then there was an old man in a wheelchair. <laughs> it's, it's out there with his cup, you know, reminded me of Uncle John. <laughs> right? So I got him on video for a second. And then there was another old man... In the, in the justice access room where they help you to do these things and he came in and one of the workers was asking him what do you want to do and he was an elderly no, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. okay please don't interrupt I'm almost done I'm almost done say we got two say, say, say we got two two what two donuts Okay, we're not interested in donuts right now. Yeah, we got two donuts. People are always scored. <laughs> anyway, we got a whole roll of, uh, what do you call those? Uh, white oak trees, that little ones like this, growing. So we're going to dig them up maybe tomorrow and bring them home, put them into some pots and try and rescue them before they get trampled over, mowed down, right? And uh, so, yeah, but this elderly guy there... The woman says, well, why are you in here, right? And he goes, well, I want to file a lawsuit. Old man, right? And I, I, this was just as I was getting ready to leave. And she handed she handed him the piece of paper with the, you know, information in terms of, like, um, pro bono. And, like, you know what my experience is like. They don't really help with lawsuits. That's not what they're there for, right? They're there more for bankruptcies and housing issues and that type of thing. So, you know, in the event of I ever get my own life in order, that's, you know, would be where I would volunteer my time. Because now that I know how to file an amendment in terms of the correct paperwork that goes with it and what's actually involved with it versus, you know, putting in things 
that might confuse the court and what wouldn't confuse the court. You know, I'm a little more confident, right? So now that I'm a little more confident, I'm actually going to take the time to sit down and start amending at least the statement of facts for CIBC Bank. I don't have a lot of time. Tomorrow I'm outside. Sunday, I hear it's going to start raining. So depending on how much it rains, but for the next two days, I'm basically outside, people. That's what I'm going to be doing. I'm getting back on the bandwagon with Andre Shed, um, putting some stuff away, getting into the garage, getting ready for the big one, pulling down the plastic. Uh, we're bathtub shopping right now and that type of thing. Bathroom hasn't been done yet, but we're in the process of looking for ma proper materials and that type of thing. And that's that would be a perfect example, like, like, like the 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 relief sought and the um, legal basis is kind of like asking me to go into the bathroom and rip up the bathtub and put in new drywall with the tiles so that you know it protects the drywall so when you have a shower and you know it's like asking me to go and start fix the toilet off and you know do all the necessary repairs on around the, the you know the plumbing end of it and putting it back and that that would be like asking me to do that without without any kind of direction never been shown how to do it before you know with limited resources and you know no knowledge well that's kind of like how I feel about those other two sections that I did not alter right you know so I mean if you don't know how to do it how can they expect you to do it and if you try to do it they shouldn't beat you up for at least trying well not beat you up but they shouldn't they shouldn't mock you or belittle you or you know because you tried right now I don't know about this this last note I don't know about this freebie thing I this part I haven't quite figured out yet the judge said I got a freebie when I went and I was filing this stuff and then after everything was done, I said, well, before I go, you know, what? how much does it cost to file an amendment? <clears throat> right? And she said nothing. They kept saying nothing. And I'm like, well, then why did the judge say I got a freebie? You know, what is this freebie? Apparently, it has nothing to do with money. I'm not even really too sure what it has to do with. It has nothing to do with money. It's the fact that I guess, I, I guess by, by court, rules they the court is them itself it's supposed to be a separate entity but in fact you're dealing with human beings but the court itself is obligated by law to give you that one chance to do the amendment so this was my one chance people from my understanding now how you get a second chance i don't know because if it has nothing to do with money and you can't pay to put in a second amendment. Does that mean that I'm now hooped because I didn't completely amend it correctly and therefore that will be enough grounds for Fraser Health to um, toss it off to the side and get it dismissed? <laughs> That's what I was facing by editing those two sections because it wouldn't have measured up to whatever the language is because I it's, I don't know how to write those two sections, never mind write the first section. Okay, I gave it my best shot with the first section. I think I did a pretty damn good job. Um, unfortunately, I'm the one that came out looking like the villain here in terms of I forced the court to take the information because I was trying to cover my bases with the lawyer and the master so that we could move on to, you know, and just get on with it. Just get on with it, you know? Let's just get on with it. All right? So, that's what's happening. So, I guess tomorrow we'll be outside videos, putting on shingles on Andre's shed. Okay, people. Still the four 14th of September here. My eyes are going bonker. Here's what's happening. Like I said, when I did this before... I somewhat did it correctly, but I didn't do it correctly completely. And because the writing is so small, you can see how small that is. 
It's very, very small. <laughs> right? It's very hard to strike strike something out and then draw a line under something that you wrote in there uh, five-eighths of an inch in, in height. <laughs> With your eyesight going on you. That's the point. My eyesight's going on me and it's very hard for me to focus. Right? And after a while, the paper, whatever's on the words, all start to look the same. So, needless to say, I already started to make mistakes, but I caught myself while I was doing it. So this is what I'm doing right now. I'm drawing lines again, people. That's what I'm doing. And a little bit of that. Uh, yeah, and I, I tried to do it on the computer. This is what I narrowed it down to. This is what I was trying to edit, but it pff, just didn't work, people. So what I'm doing is I'm photocopying the page and then rewriting whatever it is that I did and drawing the lines and then photocopying it and inserting it into that because that didn't work. Okay, people. Now I'm starting to feel like an English teacher. <laughs> like, seriously. As I'm making mistakes along the way, I'm like, oh. I'm running back and forth between the photocopier, right? What I'm doing is I'm, I'm only on page 16. And we've got, what, 100 and... I can't remember what it was. 149 pages or 39 pages or something like that. So I'm going page by page photocopying that this is what I'm doing photocopying the page where I have to either redraw lines and write even smaller and make it more visible to the best of my ability right I mean if you take a magnifying glass to it it looks pretty damn good right but outside of that like I'm just kind of like it's like riding a bike it's one of those things you don't forget in other words I know how to write small right if I wanted to so, it's kind of like Andre, right? Like, he can do those letters big, but again, at the end of the day, he can do them at a quarter inch height straight across. So, you know, that means he's gotten that talent from me. So, in the meantime, what's happening here is, like, I should have, what I should have done is I should have put the line through the word that I introduced into the new paragraph and then photocopied it versus this time around, I'm having to draw the line on both pieces and I'm submitting both pieces. I'm I'm at, so that so that the court and the lawyers they can see that it's not like I'm not trying if they're not watching my videos, right? <laughs> because you always know that curiosity killed the cat, right? <laughs> so, so anyway, uh you know, it's mistake after mistake. I'm trying to fix the mistakes as I go. I don't know how long this is going to take me to go up to 139 pages and then after that, I have to stand by this printer that I just got. <coughs> and photocopy everything uh, for a second time so that when I go downtown tomorrow I can submit it to the court and then after that I'm going to go to their office hopefully it was it's within reasonable walking distance and then give them a copy as well and then I should be fine for that and while I'm downtown I'm going into that um, uh, access justice and I'm going to make inquiries about um, putting a notice of application. I've already, I got the stuff here. I just, it, everything, I, get, I don't have an office, people, so things get mixed up. You have to remember, Uncle John's paperwork has been in the house for over two and a half years. And, I mean, I've got stuff sitting in bins in my kitchen. Like, come on, like, this is ridiculous. My sewing table is infested with that marrow weed, right? Like, I, I so want to just get it together and organize it and do, deal with it and put it to rest. I do. Without the Catholic Church, thank you very much. So now I'm like having severe panic attacks. 77 minutes on the camera. <laughs> no, like serious. I'm like having serious, serious panic attacks because my eyes are like just going off the roof here, people. Like, so I have to breathe, right? That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to breathe. Okay, people. It's like September. What is it? The 15th, 2017. I don't think any walnut trees, people, can grow here. It's kind of impossible. I'm going to the lawyer's office to drop off my amendment after I got into a great big huffle with all the clerks at the courthouse that took the amendment under force. I'll be back. Okay, people. So there. 
I'm just doing a video, guys. Oh, yeah, go ahead, yeah. Thanks. No worries. Look what I found in the city. Oh, nice. Isn't that a nice little feather? Oh, that's cool, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just got it over there. Oh, I mean, who would think a little bird like that? Yeah, yeah, holy God. That, that's a real pretty feather. Cool. Yeah, so anyway, I um, delivered the amendment to the lawyer's office, <laughs> filed it with the court. The problem with the court was, though, is they took it under duress um, because of the, because of what the master had asked in terms of 20 pages, no more than 20 pages. And through the court rules, when you're making an amendment, you do it on your original notice of claim. You draw your lines, you know, through the things that are insignificant, whatever. If you add new information, you underscore it. And uh, I did all that for the for the for the um, statement of facts, anyway. And then uh, I typed out to make it, you know, so it's it's easy to read, right? Right. I mean, I've I always tried to make it easy to read, but yeah, anyway, yeah. Uh, just because of the way the filing process is with the court, the the clerks were reluctant to take both of them at the same time because it would confuse the court. We're going with the confused word again, people. And I'm like, well, no, 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 you got to take them both because they wanted to take out... They, 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 they didn't want to take the 20 pages. They wanted to take the original notice of claim that I had done all the information, like, you know, did whatever on. And I said, well, no, that's not what the master's asked for. He asked for the 20 pages. So needless to say, it was almost an hour of uh, different individuals that went to management and... And at the end of the day, they came back and they said that they were taking it because I, they asked me what I wanted. And I kept insisting I wanted them both going in together uh, based on that 20-page amendment. And because the lawyer, right, for Fraser Health, wanted the amendment somewhat followed by the rules in terms of the lines and the underscore and all this other stuff, I wanted to please the lawyer too, right? So I'm, I'm trying to please the masters and I'm trying to please the lawyer as I'm pissing off the clerks, right? I'm getting everybody all riled up. At one point, I even thought that security was going to be called on me, people. I pulled out my camera. I was ready to have it turned on in case security grabbed me by my arms and tried to haul my ass out of there because the lady that was dealing with me just refused to do it the way I was asking her to do it because she said that's not the way you do it and then she ran off with it. And because my eyesight is not bad, I confused her with somebody else and I thought she was ignoring me when in fact it was actually somebody else that was, it wasn't her and she had gone to talk to management. So, I mean, like, it just shows you how bad my eyes are, right? <laughs> and, and even then I asked her, I asked her her name, if she's not going to take it the way I want to file it because I'm thinking like, you know, this is the way the master wants it, this is the way the lawyer wants it, I have to file it this way. And if since you're not going to file it, you know, and you just want to take take either one or the other, and then I get screamed at either by the judge or, or the masters or by the lawyer, you know, who can I blame? What's your name? And she says, well, I don't have to give you my name. And I'm like, well, yes, you do, because if you're telling me I can't do something, then and it, you know, it blows up in my face. I want to be able to say, oh, this, can you see how it was going? So then, like I said, she ran off, she went to go talk to her manager, and then I dealt with another person, then I dealt with another person, and then the manager came, and, and I, I fully understand everything that they were saying in terms of confusing the court, but at the end of the day, it's a, comp a complicated case, and, um, you know, I guess there has to be compromises in there, so, well, I guess we'll find out. So anyway, they took it under force. They made sure that I agreed to that. And I said, well, fine, you know, I take responsibility for that because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, not only am I trying to follow the rules, but I'm, I'm, I'm also, you know, they told me to, 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 to make an amendment. And I did the amendment to the, best, to the best of my ability. And I'm learning. So now that I know how to do somewhat of an amendment, maybe not the relief sought, and definitely not the legal basis. I don't know how to write that, people. I have nothing to compare it to. You know, I can't find anything online to compare how it should be written. I don't have time to go downtown and sit in the library and ask for people to help me because the minute I get home starting tomorrow, guess where I am? I'm back out in the yard. I'm in the basement. I'm in the garage. 
But now that I do know how to make an amendment to some to some degree, I'm going to start working on the amendment for, um, I guess you could say, CIBC Bank. And um, but at the same time, I want to bring the two together. I want to merge Fraser Health and CIBC Bank together, so that you know we can figure this out more quicker between what's you know I, I just I just want what's right for Uncle John people I just want what's right for my kids you know I, I just want to get on with my own life as a matter of fact we got a new chapter in our walnut you know series right with Andre right in the children's series where you know the walnuts are at court right and six 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 walnuts right and uh, you know some of them have to be picked off the trees and some of them fall off the trees and then the good old walnut monkey came in and shook a few off the trees right so that's going to be part of our series right the walnut the walnuts at the courthouse <laughs> so people about the only thing that's happening here is we have a broken human being laying in the middle of the sidewalk as everybody just walks on by I've been standing here for about 10 minutes people and people are completely apathetic to even offer a hello now I got three dollars in change which isn't a lot of money I'm gonna give this person in his cup And this is just not right. We live in one of the richest countries of Canada where houses are selling for millions of dollars through laundering of money from overseas so that the people that are born in this country, like I've said, end up like this. Right? just go over there and give him his three dollars are you awake buddy yeah okay well can I put you on camera for free no I got three dollars sure what do you, what do you mean? I am telling your plight your what I am telling your plight how people are just walking by and ignoring you. Yeah. And that it's not they, right. They do it all the time. They do it all the time, eh? You know, it's... Who, who, are, who are they to say where I've been or where I haven't been, right? Well, yeah, exactly. You know, people go... Life is ups and downs, man. Yeah. Nobody's perfect, you know? If it wasn't for ups and downs, people wouldn't be who we are, right? Yeah. So, boom, I'm not a bad person because I'm fucking... I'm in a shitty position right now. Doesn't mean nothing. I'm a junkie. Yeah, whatever. At least I'm not out fucking breaking into cars and stealing. Okay, well, I wouldn't say you're a junkie. I would say that you have an addiction. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm an, I have an addiction. Whatever. Okay, but That's everybody has an addiction to some degree. Yeah. People are addicted to different things. Yeah, well, it just so happens that what I'm addicted to is not exactly... It's... It's unfortunate because it's very difficult to, to pull yourself up. Yeah, but how many people have addiction and can afford housing versus how many people have addiction, the same kind of addiction, because there's a lot of people out there with addictions that hide those addictions until such time. Who knows what happens with that addiction, but they're in positions where, you know, they're working and they're doing whatever and they're coping, you know, with their addictions and then they lose, you know, they, they don't necessarily lose their housing because their position within their job description. Yeah. Do you understand what I mean? Like, why do we, why do we criminalize the poor person with the addiction versus the, the, the person making $600,000 a year with the addiction? Yeah. Or... Two hundred thousand dollars, or even seventy thousand dollars, or even thirty thousand dollars a year. I mean, in terms of different types of employment, yeah. because addiction is not isolated to the streets. Is that not true? No, it's not. No, no, it's you, not. You got a point. You got a point. So don't beat yourself up over it. Yeah. The only problem is, is you're impoverished, and people treat you as less because because of the poverty. Yeah. And uh, and that shouldn't be because. You you know, fancy bags or fancy cars or high-paying jobs should not 
should not make a person, you know? No. If society in itself, people, if the people of the world stood up for themselves, you know? Well, we have we're, failed we're, government we're policies. We're because of the government. Right? Exactly, and, and this is the thing. The BC Labour government was in power for, what, 16 years? And they decimated the indigenous born people that are born in this country by bringing in an immigrant population that started buying up all the properties through laundering of money. That, you know, properties uh, four years ago were selling for $500,000. They're now three years later selling for $3 million and up. And they're flipping them every six, four months to just keep them up and up and up. So there's, there's a lot of, like, white-collar criminal activity that's uh, not addressing... So, so that's how all these people... Like, they come from a country where their money is worth fuck all over here. Nothing. But yet, they they have everything. Well, we've got people coming over here buying houses outright for two, three, four, five million dollars, and their housewives as the students. It's been documented. It's already been reported on. 70% of all house sales in, Can in British Columbia, Canada, last year, were from people from other countries. And many of those house sales were paid outright, cash until the B.C. Liberal government brought in that 15% sales tax to try and stop that uh, uh, money laundering that was going on. But nobody went to jail for it. Because you want to know why nobody went to jail for it? It's because it's people like you and me that pay the price by losing our homes. And then for some of us, we do fall into addictions, more so than others. Yeah. And then we get beat up over the addiction, and that's why people just keep on walking by, because they don't want to focus on the human being and what's around and what, what, what instigates these things. I don't think anyone said, here, grow up to be, yeah. you know... No, what one, no, one, no one woke up one morning and said, oh, I'm going to be an addict. Exactly. No, nobody. And it can happen to any one of these. And, the, and there are people that are addicted to the drugs or whatever their alcohol or... Um, you know, yeah, but alcohol is acceptable. Yes, but there are also a lot of affluent people. I don't know if you know this, but there are also a lot of affluent people that are addicted to heroin. They just hide it well. They just hide it. Yeah. They do it for years and years and years and years, and for whatever reason, they don't. Because, in part, if they want to go for rehab, they can afford to pay for the rehab. That's one thing. Whereas you can't. No. And then I know, like for BC housing. You can't get BC housing, which is a social program, right? You yeah. can't get it unless you're clean for six months. So therefore, that just takes you off the map, takes you off the list, which is not fair, right? Yeah. Same thing with the recovery houses. If you're not on methadone... Most recovery houses are, 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 are criminally run anyway. So a lot that of too, are. yeah, yeah, yeah. I live in Surrey. Yeah. I live in Surrey. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say in yeah, Surrey. In Surrey, uh, yeah, we know all about Surrey, right? Yeah. Put it on me for a minute if you like. No, 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 yeah. I'm good. You're good. So, so there's lots of there's lots of barriers that are holding you back there. But you know what? For all these people that are walking by, I just want you to know that that there are people out there that do care, and we are I fighting. I know. We're fighting I, for change. I I do I do get by. It takes it takes a bit of a you know it takes a toll because a lot of these people are their ignorance. It, it really breaks me down, but. I try not to let it, but some some days when I'm sick, I tell you, being dope sick, man, is I, I've been I've been a lot of things in life, and I've 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 been I've been cut, I've been I've been emotionally scarred, I've been everything, but being my body being physically sick. My daughter, my my oldest daughter struggles with it. She's dying actually from it. It's she's dying. My daughter's dying. She's 20 29 years old, and she's dying because she's not getting proper health care. She's bleeding out. She goes for blood transfusions every month. Why is that? She's bleeding out. What do you mean? She, she bleeds out from her body to the point where she becomes so anemic, she passes out. And then so they have to give her a drug blood transfusion just to build up her white count cell, her yeah. cell, white cell count. So that she'll live, otherwise she'll die, because she's got no, no, she's got nothing in her blood. It's, she bleeds out. She bleeds out. Like, the blood flows out of her body. And they're not giving her surgery to correct whatever it is that's provoking this, and she's not getting any kind of proper recovery. Nothing. Nothing. She just, just so, I, I feel your pain. I, I know. I see my daughter has been struggling with it for a long time. So, okay. All right. So there's Uncle John.